Hey guys, welcome to this video where we'll be going over some of your questions regarding grade boundaries for GCSE Maths. Many of you have common questions such as, you know, I got this many marks, I think, on paper one and this many marks on paper two. What marks do I need on paper three to get this X grade or whatever it is? Or some of you are asking the question, will the grade boundaries be the same as last year or 2019, so on and so forth. So in this video, we are just going to go over what we know of how grade boundaries are set, the process involved, and we will give our own predictions. Now, remember, this is just a prediction, so you've got to bear that in mind. So if there's anyone out there saying, you know, you can't predict exam grades, we agree with you, okay? We agree with you. But this is going to be an educated prediction based on statistics that we have available to us. Now, who sets grade boundaries? What do we know about that? Well, first of all, the data that they, that they, they acquire from all these students, um, it will form a bell-ship curve. Um, so based, based on that, they, and in fact that they need to have a certain number of grades each year, um, they will set the grade boundaries accordingly. So all the students in the country, all their marks are put into a system and they're taken into consideration. So the, how does the foundation kids, because in GCSE maths you've got a higher tier and a foundation tier, how does the foundation tiers fit in there? What do they do about that? Don't forget the in the foundation. Obviously, the, to get a grade five, they they will have to have answered enough higher level questions. So based on that, um, they will look at obviously it could be a higher percentage to get a, a grade five in, in in foundation. But they do some sort of scaling to put them into the old system, right? And to figure out that scaling is this where the proportion coming in. The proportion, the proportion of, that, of and that's grade why grade five, grade four, and and the actual other parts. And this is why, for example, in two thousand and twenty two on the Ed Excel paper. To get grade five, you needed 173 marks, which was 70, which was 72 percent. Okay, and that grade, same grade five, can be obtained by getting 71 marks on the higher paper, which is 30 uh, percent. That's the scaling that's used. So, what kind of things affect grade? I mean, why is it grade boundaries are not the same every single year? What kind of things affect grade boundaries? Well, the factors are obviously that every year's cohort cohort is different, um, and obviously. In terms of where the students came from, in terms of you know, this current year obviously uh, would be the year group that would have um, they would have been in year nine, is it when I, the school I, school school closed so, down? Yeah, was yeah. Nine? they'll still have some impact on uh, of, of of what happened the yeah. last few years. Yeah. Um, what about the exam difficulty of the exam each year? I mean, the questions are different, so that's something that will affect uh, you know grade boundaries every single year. Uh, I mean, we looked at on the A level one, uh, but obviously this is a GCSE one, but you know, a paper one in 2019 could be different to a paper one in 2022 or 23. Even though the paper one in 2019 was harder than the one that they have done this year, yeah. more people, more students in, in, in 2019 may, may have done better, again, because of the um, teaching that was done during that year, they would have covered more, more grounds, less disruption to, yeah. the, to, to the education. So in that sense, it's... It's, it's, so this it's, is where the, you know, like you've got the AI, the algorithm or whatever, uh, but these were the senior examiners, the experts come in and they take into factor all of those different things, right? All the factors. All the effect. factors, yeah. So without further ado, let's dive into looking at some of the data from previous years. Now, we've used um, MathSpot, who have done this really nicely on their website to get this data. Let's start off by looking at 2022 and then look at 2019. And why have we chosen those years? It's because the government has uh, made a pledge to go back to pre-2019 grade boundaries. So this is why these are very important. And last year in 2022, they did try to make a shift from uh, fr from what happened the last two years by going to the in-between. Uh, okay, so 2019 will be uh, you know a grade boundary that we will look at quite closely. And then from that, we can maybe give uh, a guesstimate. So if we look at... Um, this two-way table in front of you for 2022. You've got all on the left-hand side, uh, all the different exam boards. Uh, AQA and NXL are the most sort of popular ones in this country. But let's <coughs> take a look at the grade uh, five. So you needed 173 marks on the foundation. Um, and that can be divided across all three papers, the aggregate of all three papers, right? Because often one of the questions that we get asked is, if I you know, didn't do well on this paper, can I still do well? Oh, well, of course you can, because you've got 240 marks. Each paper is 80 marks. So your 240 marks is from those three papers. So if you don't do well on paper number one, you can still get a decent mark on paper two and paper three. and Therefore, you can en end up with a decent mark overall. So now if you look at the 2019, and you can see that 
the edX on the edX paper, it was actually higher to get grade five. You need 184 marks to get a grade five. And on the higher paper, you needed 80 marks. So that's quite a jump from 2022. However, if you look at the AQA, it's actually lower in 2019 than it was in 2022. 157 marks on the foundation to get grade five and 74 marks on the higher to get grade five. This goes back to us saying that every year papers are different. Uh, the questions are different. And ex different examples will have different difficulties of papers. And proportion as well. So in that year, in 2019, they could have a, had more higher proportion or a higher grade within the paper. Mm -hmm. Hence, as a whole, the paper was harder. Hence why the percentage grade by regime had to be lower. And this is why it makes it quite difficult to say, you know what, this is what you need to get these grades, okay? But we're still going to try. We're still going to make an attempt because... As you know, some students out there, they just want a number to attach them to, to sort of aim for. And we get that. We get that because, you know, if you've uh, had an experience of paper one and paper two and whatever that experience is and you're aiming for a particular grade, then if we can give you some sort of indicator of what you might need and we will do that. Yeah. So shall we go ahead and do that now? Let's start with the higher paper for Edexcel to get grade four. 52 marks to get a grade four in 2019. That's 22%. Which is 22%. On the foundation, 149 marks, 62%. 2022, that same Edexcel, 135 on the foundation and 38 marks on the higher. So looking at that, what would you say your prediction is uh, to get a grade four so on the Edexcel? 2019, compared to last year's cohort, this year's cohort was, was had an extra year of that where the COVID wasn't, wasn't affecting us. Yeah, so most likely it's going to be higher than 16%. Um, and that would be the lower bound. And mm. then upper bound is, I would say, 22%. So if you had to so go for a number, what would you say? 20%. 20%. Let's look at 2018 very quickly. Let's see what it was in 2018. The same thing, because if it's 21%. Okay, so it actually got higher in 2022. Uh, 2019, sorry. Yeah. So we'll go with what, 20% you're saying? I would, I would okay. say 20%. 20%. Or around 20%, yeah? What? And for the AQA, you got 18% in 2019. And in 2022, you got 21%. So again, you're looking at 18 to 21% in that sort of range. In terms of marks, 43 to 51 marks on the higher. So should we stick with 20%? Yeah, go, I think it's something around that. So in terms of marks, you got 43 and 51. So around those sort of marks, 43 to 51 marks. Between 43 yeah? to 51. That's what you're aiming just for. Just keep that band um, for that. Let's go to the upper end, all right? The grade sevens, because a lot of students will be looking at the sevens, eights, and nines, okay? So you had 137 marks on Edexcel in 2019, and you had 137 marks again in 2022. That's a nice little pattern to look at. And this is ranges we'll see, so yeah, there's no range there. So what we're saying about 137 marks. Yeah. Let's go to 2018, about 139. Because you say between 139 yeah. and 137 and, marks. But th that certainly doesn't exist when you go to the AQA, however. It was 136 marks for a grade 7, okay, in 2019, and 156 marks for a grade 7 in 2022. If you go to the 2018, AQA grade 7 was 138 marks. So what would you say about that, though? That's a hard one to predict for a grade seven for AQA. Are we going to go above 138 here as a minimum, as a minimum? 57 to 57 to 65. That's a hard one, right? So last year they had a topic list so that you can see why a lot of students did better um, last year. And that's why they were great. So they if they don't have the topic list, this is what 2019 wasn't a topic list. Yeah. So shall we say around 58%, 56%? Yeah, I would go with 50, that. 58%, let's go, 57%. Okay, so 136 marks, 138 marks, yeah, around that sort of figure. Grade nines, guys, you can look at the table. Obviously, we, we, you've got it in your, on your screens in front of you. Okay, you can sort of make that estimation yourselves. I mean, this is not, it doesn't take rocket science to make this estimation, but we're just sharing with you the data. We're just making it available to you um, on this platform. So a grade nine in Edexcel uh, in 2019, 180, 198, sorry, 198 marks. And on the AQA, 206 marks. If you go to 2022, it was 194 for the Edexcel and 214 for the um, AQA. So what kind of mark would you say this year? 82%. 82%, yeah. But in terms of marks, we're looking at 100 and... Between 198 and... 194, 298. Okay, brilliant. I mean, look, guys, you can work out the rest of these. 
obviously we don't have a, a, a crystal ball that tells us what the grades are. We don't have any connections with anyone. Uh, these are just us looking at the data and giving you a range. Don't think of it as something that's set in stone. We're providing the range of values based on the data from previous years. So for each grade, uh, look at the mark needed for grade seven, for example, in 2018-19 and 2022, mm -hmm. and you'll have a rough range of values. And that's what if they your came mark for. is within that range, then that's roughly what your grade would be for for for, for the current year. So there you have it, guys. Um, hopefully this helps you and helps you navigate your way. And if you're watching this, uh, you know, whenever you're watching this, not into 2023, then you can still use the information to work out the kind of grade boundaries that might be used for your year. Goodbye from us. Yeah, take care.